Hi everyone, welcome again. In this video, we will learn some key concepts related to in-memory caching. When we talk about in-memory cache or when we explore the in-memory caching solutions, we often come across these terms, these concepts like in-memory cache, in-memory database and in-memory data grid. And in this video, we will cover these three concepts. We will see what are these, what are the differences between these three and what exactly is in-memory database and what is in-memory data grid. So let's start. Let's say we have a database. So on the right hand side, we have the database and the database will store some data. And on the left hand side, we have the application. So in normal scenarios, the database stores the data and application needs the data. So whenever the application needs some data, it will reach out to the database that, hey, I want this record. And the database will return the data back to the application. So that's how generally things work. Now the problem is whenever the application needs some data, it has to go to the original data source, in this case database. And when the load increases, the number of requests to the database will also increase. And in such scenarios, we start observing the slowness between the application and the database. So what do we do? How do we accelerate this whole thing? How do we reduce the latency between the application and the database? We know it already. We introduced the cache. We covered this bit in one of the fundamentals videos. So again, we have the application and on the right hand side, we have the database. But in between, we have now introduced the caching. So this is the cache that will store a subset of data, the hot data that application frequently accesses. So now what happens when the application needs some data, the application will check the cache first. If it finds the data in the cache, this is the cache hit scenario. The data from the cache will be returned to the application. But let's say if the data is not present in the cache, that means this is the cache miss scenario. Then we need to fetch the data from the database in this case. And there are multiple ways to do so. For example, the application can read the data directly from the database and the application can update the cache so that the next time when the application needs the same data set, it can get the same data from the cache. The second alternative could be that cache is smart enough to handle the cache miss automatically so that it can read the data from the database, it can store the data and return the same data back to the application. Now this is not important what we are discussing because we have already covered this. The bottom line is in this case between the application and the database we have introduced the caching which is storing the subset of data, the hot data. Alright, this is not the full data set. This is only a subset of data. That is the important part. Okay, so we know the cache will store the data, but where does it store it? Where does the cache store the data? So the cache can store the data in let's say the file system. So there will be a linking between the cache and the file system, maybe a working directory or some set of files. So whenever the cache stores the data, it stores in the file system. The second way of achieving the same thing would be to store the data in memory. What that means is we know that this cache is up and running. How do we start the cache? Maybe we started the cache as a separate server, as a separate application. Or maybe the, we are running the cache in embedded mode within the same application. So that means the cache is sharing the same memory process, let's say the same heap in case this is a Java application, let's say. So the thing is, whether we are running the cache in embedded mode with the same application on the same node in the same JVM process, or we are running cache as a separate process, the important thing is the cache will have some memory because this is a program, it needs some memory and the cache can store the data using the same memory. When it does that, we say that this cache is in memory cache. So whatever memory is accessible to the cache as a process, it will store the data set on the same memory, not on the file system or any persistence layer, but on the same memory where it's running. So this is called in-memory cache. The benefit is in case of in-memory cache, the data retrieval from the cache is way faster as compared to reading the data from the file system. Because in this case, we read the data directly from the memory. So in-memory caches are extremely fast. So what is in-memory cache? In in-memory cache, the cache stores the data in memory on the RAM, not on the file system. 
Now let's move on and try to understand the second concept which is in memory database. So we have the application and we have the cache. Earlier when we talked about in memory cache, we were storing the subset of data. This is the actual database which has the whole data set but in the in memory cache we were storing the subset of data. So that is in memory cache. In case of in memory database, we store the whole data set, basically the whole database in memory on the RAM, same as in memory cache. So when we store the whole data set, the whole database is running in in memory mode, then this is called the in memory database. So this is not the cache anymore. This is in memory database because here the whole database, including all the tables and everything is running in memory rather than let's say storing the data on the file system then reading the data from the file from the disk all right here everything is available on the ram in memory so application can let's say talk to the database same as any other database depending on the apis provided by this in memory database and just to iterate it has everything because this is basically the database so it will have the tables the constraints and everything the only difference is in this case it doesn't have to read the data from the disk but everything is available on the RAM. So again this is super fast. So this is in memory database. Now what is the difference between in memory cache and in memory database? First of all in in memory cache we store the subset of data. In case of in memory database this is the whole database running in in memory mode. The second difference could be that in case of in memory cache, we can cache any kind of data. So let's say we can cache the result of a computation, we can cache the frequently running reports, we can cache the user profiles. But in case of in memory database, this is the actual database with all the tables and their corresponding data. So this is not just let's say some temporary computation or everything. This is the database. All right. Now let's move on to the last concept, which is in memory data grid. Now in this case, let's say we have the application and uh, there are multiple databases. So this is DB1, this is database 2, this is database 3. So what happens, let's say we are working on a reporting application. In order to generate a report, we need some data from the database 1. Then we need some data from database 2, some other data set from database 3. And when we have the required data from all these databases, uh, via different queries then we generate the report set and every time when we have to generate the report we have to fetch the data from all these databases as you might have guessed already that this is slow so we should introduce some kind of caching let's say we introduce the caching if this is an in-memory cache we can store some subset of data some partial data let's say from db1 some other partial data set from db2 and some other partial data set from db3 so that we don't have to uh, let's say reach out to the database in case the same data set is available in the in memory cache but still the data that is not available in the cache for that data we have to go back to the original data source in this case db1 db2 or db3 and the reason behind this is because we don't have the full data set available in the cache and also we cannot have and in memory database because in this case there are different databases so how do we create a single in memory database what we can do in this case so let's say we have the application and here we have the same databases db1 db2 and let's say dbn and it does it doesn't have to be a database it could be any data source so it could be let's say a relational database rdbms it could be a nosql database it could be uh, let's say a Hadoop cluster or any data lake it could be anything any data store now what we can do we can pull the data from all these sources we pull in the data from all these sources and we store the data in memory at a common location so we are storing the whole data set from all these data sources at a common location which is running in memory and now when the application runs whenever the application needs some data it goes to this in memory data store rather than reading the data from let's say these sources db1 db2 or dbn 
Now when we store the data at a common location which is in memory this is called in memory data grid. This is the data grid. Data grid has everything all the data set. It has everything which is available in memory. It doesn't have to go to the original data source or it doesn't have to read the data from the disk. This is available on the RAM. Everything is available on the RAM. So what is the difference between in memory cache, in memory database and in memory data grid? Well, this is not in memory cache uh, in a sense that it, it's not storing the subset of data. It's not the hot data. Instead, the everything is available on the RAM. It doesn't have to be hot data. All right. And it's different from the in-memory database because it's not a database by definition. Rather, it is collecting the data from all these data sources and we are storing the data at a common location. So this is in-memory data grid. Here we are creating a grid of all the data which is required by the application. So that's all for now. I hope the distinction between in-memory cache, in-memory database and in-memory data grid is now clear and you are able to understand the concept and the differences and i will see you in the next video thanks for watching